Hi, and welcome to this week's Win Active webcast. Thanks very much for joining us. We've got another great guest uh, to talk later. A little bit of a different tack, but we'll get to Sarah soon. But first of all, as per normal, welcome James Robertella. How are you today, James? Really well, Barry. Another week and uh, yeah, we're facing some new challenges, but hopefully we're on, um, you know, the the path to, to better things and yeah, hope everyone out there is is going really well and, and keeping safe, healthy and active. Um, and, you know, exciting uh, next week, Barry, we've got our Find Your 30 Challenges beginning or our, our challenge for August, which is uh, really uh, yeah, we've been building to this one, and uh, I know the team's been putting a lot of work into um, into putting together some fantastic content for uh, for a variety of interests. So hopefully, uh, yeah, there's something out there for you to uh, to join you into the Find Your Thirty Challenge and um, and keep hitting that mark of uh, thirty minutes a day, five days uh, a week of activity. Yeah, look, exactly right, James. I think. For me, there's a couple of things about the Find Your 30 Challenge, and that is uh, the great work that Win Active and Wyndham City together are doing to keep the community uh, active, um, but also the, how we're like, check the socials, check Win Active website, because it's, it's really uh, expanded and it's, it's bigger and better than ever. But enough of Find Your 30 Challenge. We've got a fantastic guest here today, Sarah Merkus from the city of Casey. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you, guys. Great to be here. Look, I think um, from our perspective, Sarah, Casey and uh, Wyndham have so much in common, like two of the fastest growing areas in Australia, if not the two fastest growing 100%. areas in Australia. Um, and so we thought it'd be great to talk to you today about those similarities and how you're dealing with it over there and how we're dealing with it. and. Um, yeah, see, see where we're at. So, so, Sarah, first of all, tell us about the city of Casey. Casey. So, similar to you guys, we're, we're ever-growing. We're one of the second largest growing, like you've said, Baz, within Victoria, if not Australia. And we're really located in the southeast um, suburbs, like you may have heard of Cranbourne, Narry Warren, Berwick and Clyde. That's our growth areas. And we've got just about just over 370,000 people within the city of Casey. So a fairly large population and our largest cohort are the little ones. So from zero to nine years. So we're building a hell of a lot of kinders and infrastructure to be able to um, cope with the increased demand. And we have a pretty diverse uh, municipality. So where our top three countries are Australia, India and Sri Lankan. And we also have a strong representation of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders within our youth population, which is similar to you guys, I think, as well. And some juicy goss, we've just had some administrators join on to the city of KC for the next four years. So you may have heard that in the news recently. Yes, Sarah. And look, it, it, from what I understand of, of KC and, and obviously of Wyndham, what, what, our communities are so diverse, and you've just touched on there the uh, the range of um, yeah backgrounds where, where that the people are coming and, and living within these um, within the city of Casey, within the city of Wyndham. You personally, Sarah, what is your role at, at the city of Casey? So I'm team leader of Leisure Facilities, and I'm part of a team where we manage a hell of a lot of facilities. We've got ten facilities that are either contracted to a third party, so a YMCA. Um, to oversee our aquatics and our stadiums. And then we also have some um, council run facilities or managed. So we have a community farm called Myuna Farm. So it's always interested go going into different conversations and different meetings throughout the day. Um, we also have an indoor skate shed that's managed through a contract. And we have a um, the factory, which is a rehearsal centre for performing arts. So a very diverse range of facilities within the portfolio. I think uh, for me and I, for those that don't know, I was previous to uh, working with Winactive, was over in the city of Casey. So, uh, and I love the farm. I think my Una farm is just just such a wonderful place and I've enjoyed when I've been there. But, and I know you oversee it, Sarah. So can you tell us a little bit about my Una farm, but also the performing arts area as well? Yeah. So the farm, it's a community uh, facility, a community managed farm. So we offer um, a real hands-on experience. So we have animals that um, kids can 
run up and pat and handle and feed. Uh, we also offer educational programs, so from kinder right through to even um, university vet veterinary placements. Um, and so it's an opportunity for people to get out in the outdoors and then also experience a bit more of a farm setting within a, um, a city area. Um, and then conversely, if we look at the factory, um, it's a really unique facility. So um, it's a facility that's recently come into my portfolio and um, it facilitates a lot of rehearsals and practice for, for the arts. So you name it from dance to community theatre, um, right through to line bands and chorals and, and that type of thing. So it's a, a hive of activity after hours, Monday to Friday and on the weekends. So I've heard firsthand uh, with a number of guests that have joined us across the, the weeks, Barry, um, the challenges that the community has faced during these COVID period. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can imagine that they're, they're quite similar in, in Casey, but yeah, what wanted to get an understanding of how, you know, the facilities that you oversee, um, you know, what, how have you gone about managing through, the, through this challenging COVID period? I think similar to you guys, it's it's been a real challenge and everyone's been extremely hit hard throughout the pandemic. And I guess that focus has always been on membership engagement or community engagement throughout our facilities and our user groups just to ensure they're all okay. Um, and then if we look at from a council perspective, we've just tried to be really agile and proactive to see what we can do whilst our facilities are in this downtime, because it's not really um, a usual standard where our facilities are down. So just trying to work through a lot of capital works projects and retiling to when we do come out the other side, ensure that we're alive and kicking in and can make sure that we're, we're really up and ready um, for everyone to come back throughout, throughout our doors. So similar to here in uh, Wyndham, Sarah, uh, you've got the two big leisure centres. Uh, you've mm. got Casey Race and Casey Ark. But when you reopened the first time, let's call mm. it that, yeah. um, you didn't open Casey Race, am I right? No, so that's correct. So we didn't open, um, I think the pools were the first um, it, uh, restrictions to, to reopen. Um, we made a really tough call right from the go-ahead that, we're going to hit hard of our retiling projects and we're not going to open the aquatic space. We're going to leave it out of action and just trying to ensure that we can tile three areas instead of the one per year to, uh, to make sure it's ready to go for reopening. And then we ensured that KCR could, could reopen with the pools just to allow some people um, to have obviously have access within the municipality to, to aquatics. So that was a, a just a, trying to, to, you know, balance community requirements, but also ensuring that we can get our works done and minimise downtime at the other end. So I'm, I'm keen to understand as well, like, well the, the Win Active team and Wyndham City are, are busy putting together the Find Your 30 Challenge and there's a lot of other activities that, um, you know, Council have, have put together through the Wyndham Together website. Um, what have what has City of Casey been doing to, to keep that engagement that you touched on with, with the community and try to inspire people to, to keep active or um, and, and connected um, during this period? So it's been a pretty important one for us through through the YMCA, they're our facility managers of our aquatic and our stadia sites. So they've really offered that Les Meals on Demand through their partnership and then recently um, set up a Y virtual wellness platform to offer not only active opportunities, but wellbeing and resilience options as well. Um, and then from a city of Casey, we also have Bunjil Place, uh, which is a theatre and large studio facility, and it also offers a gallery. So the arts team have really focused on how can we get some arts content to the community if they can't come through our doors. So they had a really successful exhibition of Vanguard recently and um, have done some really fantastic content with artists, local artists, to still provide that offering to the community. So a different, a different flavour compared to, I guess, your live content of, of your exercise and, and um, active options, but try and also cater to that to that need of, um, of the arts as well. So, like, a lot's happening. I think every local government, there's a lot of work being done to try and assist, engage the community, because, let's face it, uh, we're stuck at home, as we yeah. are at the moment, and we're looking for things to, to do, to be active, to occupy our mind. Um, 
Sarah, how have these programs, and we can talk about what the Y has done, but also City of Casey, how have they been um, accepted or have, have, they, have they been ta well taken up, I suppose, is my question. A hundred percent. I think they have. Um, I think it was obviously now is a critical time like you guys may be experiencing the second wave of lockdowns is a little bit harder than the first wave so ensuring people can come on that journey is, has been really important. Council have also um, we've um, uh, redirected resources in our staff um, who may not have you know they're largely front-facing roles um, they've had a bit of downtime so we've actually redirected them to field 20,000 uh, vulnerable connected calls to residents each week and that's been a really positive sign of ensuring that people can still have access to services and make sure that our vulnerable uh, vulnerable community people are really looking out for them as well so it's been really great from that angle to see, um, I guess, we're connecting to community in a very different way to what we're to used to within our facilities. I think that's brilliant. And the, you know, that community connection is, is so important during this period. And from my work with Barry and, and the team at Win Active, you know, that, that connection is, is now as important as ever. And it's, mm. um, it's fantastic to see that council facilities and, and services have pivoted and, and I'm aware of, of those at Wyndham, you know, we've got the Wyndham check-in and chat, similar service to there where you're reaching out to the um, to the more vulnerable communities and especially for those that obviously English isn't their first language, so there's, there's some added challenges um, in getting the, um, the most up-to-date and, and appropriate information out to them. Moving forward, Sarah, what, mm -hmm. what what have you got in place for um, for the facilities um, as we you know hope that um, in, in due course we'll be able to reopen them? But mm -hmm. yeah, what, what sort of planning is is going into in, in the background, which I can imagine um, you know it's difficult when there's no uh, no date at, at this point <laughs> in time. But yeah, what, what sort of things are you are you working on um, for the future of Casey and and, and those facilities? I think. If I reflect on the first closure, I feel I felt we were really chasing our tails to to open, and it really caught us off guard. I can see Baz nodding here in terms of when pools are reopening or when health clubs could reopen, um, that short time frame. So ensuring that we have our ops plans and everything in place, which we we now have obviously, and then a lot of in the background work is reassessing those readjusted budgets for us and, and making sure we can hit those marks there and, and then also ensuring that we can welcome back to the community in a safe manner but also reassure them that it's a fun and positive experience too um, not only within our health clubs in our aquatic settings but also at the farm and, and obviously at the, the factory as well and in our stadia sites so for us it's that's the key focus is ensuring fun positive but in a safe manner as well. And I think you guys would be similar over over in Wyndham as well. I, I was just listening to you then, Sarah, and I'm thinking, wow, they're almost the same words that, that I say <laughs> in many ways. And it really is um, about uh, getting our programs back as soon as possible, but it has to be, so, it has to, be the, to the normal standard that, mm. it, that it is. And it has to be safe. And safety has been taken to a whole new level with, with the COVID and, and the screens and, the, and I'm, I think you're doing sessions at Casey as well where, and booking in pre, prior to coming and, and things like that and, and, and checks and, and that. So there's so much happening um, to get open. And, and the unfortunate thing at the moment is we don't know when we're going to open. No. You know, we hope this lockdown is only six weeks, but... We never we'll know. But I think as well, it's also providing that community connection of community sports. So, you know, making sure that our user groups can actually get back up and running. So if that's our swimming clubs, if that's our, you know, basketball and netball associations, what can we do to really assist them now so that they're ready to open come whenever that elusive date will be? I think for me, James, sorry, just while you're talking, thinking there is, uh, I'm just reflecting that unbeknownst, but in the background, uh, Win Active and, and uh, Casey have a, a quite a, I'll say close, I wouldn't, we don't talk every day, but I know that Rod Gort and Ian Jenkins mm. from a stadium perspective 
talk often um, because of my contacts. I talked to, to Carly and Susie at, uh, at the aquatic centres and we touch base with what we're both doing and how we're doing it. And, um, you know, I think we learn off each other as well. So, you know, Casey and, um, and Wyndham do have a, a close relationship as well as that, those many similarities, which I really like, of course. 100%. I think if we can, you know, learn, although our, com our communities are, you know, somewhat uh, located distance wise apart, if we can um, learn from what you guys have done and, and apply similar. I know it was quite pivotal when we were opening up Casey Stadium and we've just undergone that redevelopment, what Eagle Stadium has done and, and that type of thing. Even with our swim clubs, you know, speaking to you guys about what your user groups are doing within that aquatic facilities has been really important as well. So any opportunity that we can collaborate is, is definitely a solid one for us over in Casey. So I'm keen to understand how you've personally been managing your time, obviously having to work from home and um, I know there's some nuances with, with council staff and, and having to, um, to pivot to different services and assist different teams, um, which has been exciting and, and a learning curve personally for myself. Mm -hmm. um, how have you gone um, working through this, uh, yeah, through this period? Well, it's been an interesting one. I've definitely gained a new work colleague, which is an interesting um, insight. And, and obviously, for me, I really, I need my health and wellbeing and my exercise as a stress outlet. So really focusing on that. Um, for me, as, as I'm sure you guys would be, um, just making sure we're getting out and, and finding the 30 and, and moving and getting away from the screen time has been really important. Um, and then also for the team as well, it's just ensuring, really checking in with staff members has been a, a big priority of mine because you're not going to be on 100% of the time and it's okay to, you know, roll out of bed and feel flat some days, but how can we reframe that and refocus to be grateful for what we do have um, has been a, a really big key for me. So just ensuring that staff welfare and the team are, are okay and then obviously peers and colleagues are okay as well and then looking at okay what do we need to do this week to to get us one step closer to reopening those doors i think has been a really big focus um in ensuring that we get there what about you guys i think sarah like i was going to ask you i know you're a big netballer and you love your netball and heavily involved in netball and um, and, and what you've replaced that with, because I know mm. what I've, I've actually been more active since COVID has hit than I have for, for years. And um, every, after, after work every day, I go down into my little gym in the garage and, <laughs> and, and do a workout, whether that's riding my exercise bike or doing a circuit with some weights, etc. I know James um, every morning is up and, uh, and doing some workout with your, with your, your partner, James. But... Um, so what have you been doing to, to keep active, Sarah? Oh, it's it's an interesting one. So if you had to told me, you know, pre-season 2020 that, you know, in six months' time I would be doing a netball training session inside via Zoom with six pairs of socks as makeshift netball cones, I would have laughed. But, um, <laughs> yeah, that's what we've we've done. And, we, you know, unfortunately our season has been cancelled and we, we just recently learned that. So I've been actually – I've joined the Lycra clan, Baz, so I've got out of my push bike, um, which has been an interesting one and, and just also kept my running up um, to, to make sure that – you know, you're getting out and about and also getting that stress outlet too. So, yeah, I've been similar to you, pretty active. Um, obviously, the commute time has allowed me to, um, to you know, get get out and exercise a bit more as well. So, glad to hear, Baz, that commute time has always been reduced for you because I know Barry was commuting a hell of a lot to get to Casey um, and that exercise is a, is a real key focus, which is a good one. Oh, it's been inspiring, Sarah, hearing about his uh, his physical activity <laughs> over the past weeks and months. And I, I think it's credit to um, to Barry and to everyone out there that's that's still having to go, um, still uh, prioritising their physical activity. And mm -hmm. you know, it, it's easy during these times to dwell on the the negatives, and you know, it can be sometimes all. Um, you know, all too much for, mm. for a lot of people. And I've certainly felt that from time to time as um, not finding the motivation to be active. And I suppose, yeah, for the, what we're saying here at, at Wyndham and at Win Active is, you know, find something that, that you enjoy and, and just do it your way. It doesn't really matter if it's um, 
what your friends are doing or, or what you see on social media, you know, just, just find what, what, what works for you. And, um, yeah, yeah, hopefully we, we've encouraged some people to, to keep active. And um, we definitely enjoy hearing um, other people's uh, stories about how they've uh, embraced the at-home workouts. Isn't that right, Barry? <laughs> Oh, look, we have for sure. And uh, that's right. And I, I think but I think we're the converted. We've got a background in this area. So those, we're going to say, those people who aren't, who don't know or haven't grown up or it's not part of their culture, whatever, and they, they're, if they're being more active and getting out and doing things, or I just admire those people so much. I think they're just, you know, they've embraced it and, and working with it and trying to become better people, Sarah. 100%. Couldn't agree more, Baz. I think um, obviously we're in the cohort, obviously that, you know, exercise is a routine part of our, our lifestyles and, and just trying to get out and educate people on the benefits of it. And I think you can just see in the news that more people are out walking, bike sales have gone through the roof, which is, I think, a really positive win if you can take one out of this pandemic is teaching people that health and wellness side of, is a key priority. The other thing that springs to mind as well is the important role that our, you know, champions within the community are playing, especially within those more vulnerable and, um, you know, I guess less active um, communities. So, you know, those from um, cold backgrounds or um, all the various different cohorts. And I think, yeah, what, what the learning curve we've got to now embrace is, is engaging with those community as champions within the community to really um, upskill them to be able to continue to be the leaders um, moving into this, you know, we don't like the new world term, but I think um, that's really important. So really keen for, for anyone out there to, to, to connect with us and, um, and you know, let us know how, how we can help because I think, um, yeah, it's, it's all a big learning curve um, for us moving forward as well. 100%. And I think council has so many services and offerings that go beyond, I guess, the norm of what people think councils do. So I can only echo your thoughts, James, of calling them up or speaking to someone that can refer them to services available if they're in need is, is, a, is a massive, massive component that we can all do to help each other out in this pandemic. Now, our favourite part, and James and I do this every webcast, that uh, is about expressing gratitude. So Sarah, what are you grateful for today? I think what I'm grateful for is I'm going to go down the excess the um the exercise path is I did I woke up my alarm went off this morning and I, I don't want to get out of bed. And I thought <laughs> get your ass out of bed. Sorry for the, for the language. Um, and you know went went for, for went for a run and you know felt a thousand times better with those endorphins flowing and and just really appreciative of where I am and being able to get out and having our health. So I think that's probably the key one for me today. What about you, James? I, uh, I was fortunate enough to have my birthday on the weekend. Oh, um, happy birthday. Yes, yeah, thank you very much. So it was a bit of a different one this year um, in, in lockdown. So, look, I'm appreciative of all the messages that, are, that I got wishing me a happy birthday. And, uh, yeah, it's a chance to, to connect with, their, with people again and, um, yeah, it'll be one that I remember, you know, for some different reasons. But, um, but yeah, certainly very, uh, very appreciative of that. And it was a, um, yeah, I, I got a cake made from uh, by Louise, so very happy with that. Um, very nice. I don't know, uh, yeah, if we'll be able to eat all that cake um, over the next couple of days, but we'll see how we go. You on. might need to do an extra thirty minutes each day there, James. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> be the trade off. Um, what about you, Barry? Oh, look, um, last weekend, uh, Sunday was a lovely day. I, and I got out Sunday morning and I tidied up the whole front yard, mowed, did some mowing. There's leaves everywhere, cleaned those up, tidied up the garden beds. And I was just so appreciative of the, our sunny winter day. Like, it's the middle of winter. It's not warm. I know that. That's okay. But it was nice and sunny. It was great to be out there. In fact, a neighbour two doors down... Um, now we've only lived two houses apart for eight and a half years, but haven't actually spoken. But we had, I said good day and had a great chat over a distance. Oh, great! <laughs> um, about various things. I learned about 
what uh, him and his family and he learned about my family. So, and that only happened because, you know, the weather was great. We we're both out doing stuff in the garden um, and was able to have that chat, enjoy the sunshine and be active as well. Um, and the house looks a bit better. The front yard looks a lot better now. So, well, you can come and so, do mine next. How about that, Baz? <laughs> yeah. uh, mine's enough, trust me. <laughs> mine's enough. <laughs> hey, Sarah, James, thanks very much for today. Um, one thing that I'd like to do just, just at the end is any final thoughts, Sarah, that you'd like to leave us with um, before we finish up this, uh, what's been a, a great when active webcast? Just um, thank you guys for having me and I guess that key message is um, keep safe, keep happy and keep healthy throughout this time I think is the, the takeaways I've got um, for you guys. Fantastic. James, thank you. Thanks Barry, thanks Sarah. Um, yeah, great to touch base and uh, hope everyone is well out there. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us today. It's been great to have you. I hope you've enjoyed that conversation around while two areas of Melbourne very, very uh, uh, separated by distance are very similar in many cases, and that's Casey and Wyndham, and how both uh, areas are trying to respond to this pandemic that we're living through. Thank you again. Look after yourself, look after each other, and most of all, keep smiling. Bye for now.